Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about autocaris. So first of all, we're going to talk about like what autocaris is and how, how it's done. And then later in this video here, I'm going to show you like actual code, how we can use autocaris to find the best uh, neural network or like the best model for the data that we give uh, to autocaris training method. So this is like a machine learning a framework uh, for training neural networks and stuff like that, that is built on top of Keras. So it's like an automatic, uh, automatic framework that is like creating uh, the best neural network that fits best to the data that you're passing uh, to the fit function. So this is a module built on top of Keras to actually like find uh, the best suitable model on neural network for your application or project. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server, I'll link down in the description where we talk about different kind of stuff within like neural networks, artificial intelligence and, and computer vision. And also if you have some uh, problems in, in some of your projects, like you can ask your questions in there and maybe people can answer or myself. Uh, or else just come chat with us and, and, and have fun. So let's jump into our first slide here uh, where we're going to talk about like shortly what is autocarries and how it's done and some of the different kind of parameters uh, that we can specify to actually like have this automatic or like machine learning trying to, to uh, actually like find the best possible model for the data that we that we feed to the, to the classifier or like to the, to the fit function. So machine learning is used to find the best model and parameters. So when we're training uh, in autocarries or like in carries, auto carries here is just like it tries to find the best um, the best model the best layers the best parameters by tuning by tuning those epoch per epoch and then it's using machine learning to actually like find the best model and parameters by just, just tuning them seeing like in what direction is our accuracy and our loss going and then there it's tuning in trying to uh, try other models out and it's also using transfer learning so sometimes it will just load in pre-trained models try to do transfer learning on that pre-trained model on the data that you pass to uh, pass to the fit function and the training process and then it just tries to like use transfer learning machine learning and, and a lot of other different kind of stuff to find the best model that fits the best um, that fits the best to the data that you just, just pass it to so we only need our data set when we're using auto carriers to find uh, the actual like the, the the best possible model that we can get from uh, from our data because if we just then just use machine learning it will use different kind of layers different kind of like models and also it will use some of the uh, pre-trained models so models that have already learned different kind of features uh, that, is, that is in the images. So we only need to pass our data set to this autocarries framework here and then it'll find the best possible model and then we can use that model as we will just do as if, if we created our own uh, carries model from uh, from scratch like a sequential model that we already did in one of the previous tutorials. So down here I have an image here of the image classifier where we need to specify some different kind of parameters. And this is like the different kind of parameters that we need to specify uh, to be able like to have this auto carries here running, trying to find the best possible model for our data. So we have these different kind of like number of classes we need to like specify, or if we're using multi labeling here in us in in our image classifier, and we also need to specify like how many trials do we run uh, that do we want to like try. So the maximum trials here is uh, is just an equal to uh, to hundred here as default. So it's how many different kind of models. Uh, it, it, it wants to try like 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 let's for example let's for example say we want to run one training process with ten epochs uh, that that will be one trial so we want, we want to like tune the parameters uh, try different kind of layers for for that training process and then the max number of trials is just like how many times we want to do that so we have one training process and then the number of training process that we are actually, actually like running and then inside of one training process we have the number of epochs and stuff like that as we already did so this is a really nice framework to actually like use machine learning to find the best model so you just give it the data then you just uh, go for a cup of coffee or stuff like that just wait a couple of hours if you have a really large data set and if you just specify like the maximum number of trials and stuff like that it's just you using machine learning to find the best possible model uh, for the data that you give to it and then we also have some different kind of other parameters here, which is just like kind of like default parameters and stuff like that. So we will mainly just focusing on like the max trial here and the metrics and the losses that, that we want to use uh, in our example. So we're not doing this Google call up here and I'm going to show you how we can actually like use auto carries and with an example. So we're going to load in the MNIST data set that we just in the previous video uh, here in this deep learning and neural network tutorial. We created our own neural network from scratch, trained it on the MNIST data set and, and, and went over like epoch for epoch what it, what it did in the training process. And then we did predictions um, at the end uh, on data that it hadn't seen before. So if you're interested in like knowing or like learning how we can actually like create a neural network ourselves from scratch and then train it on a data set, make sure to check that tutorial out uh, first because in this tutorial here, we're just going to use 
auto carries here to actually like use machine learning to find the best model for our data. So we're just going to take the data, the MNIST data set, and we're going to just pass it to the auto carries function and it will do everything to us and it will just return the best model with the best parameters that we can then use to do predictions on, uh, like do predictions on new data that the model hasn't seen or trained on before. So first of all, here we're going to pip install auto carries here in Google Colab because this is not already like uh, pre-installed. So we need to use this um, pre uh, pip install here auto carries in the start to actually like install it. So we'll do that here and we can see that I've already ex installed it and we can see that the requirement is already satisfied. So I'll just close this one here and then we need to import the different kind of modules and frameworks that we're going to use. So we're going to use NumPy, we're going to use TensorFlow here and we're going to load in the MNIST data set here, which is already like uh, pre-built into Keras. And then we're going to use a sequence here and we're going to import our carries here as AK. And then down here, I'm just going to run this blog code so we actually like load in the modules and frameworks that we're going to use. And then down here, we need to specify that we, that we want to use the TPU for the training um, in this example here as well. We could also use the TPU as, a, as I already uh, did a video on like how we can train neural networks here in, in, um, in Google Colab with Google's TPUs. So make sure to check that video out as well if you want to like speed up your training process and you want to train on Google's TPUs instead of the TPU. But this example and this um, and this uh, application here, we're just going to use the TPU. So when I run this program here, uh, it will run like the TPUs available. So we have one TPU available here. And then we can go down here and actually like extract the data here from the MNIST data set. So we're going to call this MNIST.load data. And then we just store it in this X train variable and the Y train variable here. So we have our training, training data here. And then we will also store the test data here with the data that we're not going to train on and we're going to use to do actual predictions at the end. And then we're just going to print out the shapes here of the training data and, and um, both for the data uh, actual images and also for the label. So we can see we have uh, 60,000 images in this data set here and it's uh, and the images Im image dim dimensions is 28 by 28. And we also have 60,000 labels here, which corresponds uh, to the images here in the X train variable. And then we also can just see like the, the Y train, uh, what, what is actually like in the Y train um, labels here. So if I run the blog code here, we'll load in the data set, split it into to the test set and the training set here. And we can see here that the first three samples of our, our, of our like training set is 504. And we can also see here for our Y train is 50419 uh, in this case here. And then down here, we can actually like specify this image classifier as I showed you in the slides, where we're just going to, to use this AK from the auto carriers. And then we're going to have this image classifier because we're going to initialize the image classifier. So there's also some other different kind of functions if you're going to use uh, image regression or something like that with auto carriers, then you will need to specify uh, image regression here instead of uh, image classifier. And then the only parameters here we're going to specify is the override here equals true. So when our neural network is training, it will just override the previous neural network or like the previous uh, weights and, and different kind of layers in the neural network if it finds something that is better. So we specify this um, this uh, parameter here, override equals to true. And we only specify this max trial here to be one uh, just uh, for like uh, demonstration purpose. You can choose this like to whatever you want and the default parameter is 100. But in this case here, we just want to run it like we want just want to run one run one trial. Uh, but if you if you want to like have a really large data set where you want to find the really like the, the best possible neural network, you will probably have to like run uh, at least like five to ten uh, trials where it just like tries to find different kind of layers. It will try different kind of uh, transfer learning methods and it will just use machine learning to find the best possible model for that data that you just give it. It will of course take a, a bit longer time, but it will do everything for you and it will just find the best function and you don't have to do anything exact uh, given a time. And then now here we can specify this fit function here as we, as we already do um, in Keras. But in this example here, it takes the images here and then it takes the labels here uh, that it wants to train on. And, and as you can see here, we don't need to specify epochs. We can specify epochs, but as a default, it would just choose uh, 1000 epochs. But in auto carries here, it will actually like, uh, use machine learning to know like when to stop. So if the loss or like the accuracy doesn't increase or uh, or increase, then it will actually like just stop the epoch and try some other different kind of parameters. So it's really nice and cool feature here where it's using machine learning for all of the different kind of parameters, also the learning rate uh, and stuff like that. So you don't need to specify anything. It will just use machine learning to find the most optimal parameters and then tune those parameters while training and doing these different kind of trials. So when we run this blog code here, it will actually like train um, the neural network here. 
and we can see that we just do the same thing as Keras here, but this is our Keras and it's just like a framework or a module built on top of Keras. So it uses this same kind of functions, but to use this actual like auto Keras here, we use this image classifier here, uh, which will actually like initialize the image classifier, which which, do, which does all the different kind of machine learning methods and techniques while training your neural network. So down here, we can see the different kind of hyperparameters we have um, in our neural network that is now uh, training on. So we can see that we're running trial number one. So we can, you can see like how far in the trials you are with your neural network when it's doing this auto carriage machine learning uh, training process. And we can also see like we have this optimizer here, we have the learning rate, and then we can actually like see the values that it's using for this trial that is running through now. And then over here to the right, we can actually like see the best value so far. So we can see the best value that, that this auto carriage machine learning uh, method or like approach uh, took. Uh, so we can, you can get the best values and we see like in this trial here it runs with a learning rate of 0 0.001 and it uses the atom optimizer it's using like some flatten in the classification at the end of course um, and some other different kind of stuff and also like how it initializes the parameter with the vanilla here and, and stuff like that and then over here when it's done training you can actually like see the best values uh, so far or like while it's training when it has found the best model and then you can just use those parameters store that parameters and then you can load it in later on and use that actual neural network that uh, that is found so down here we can see the epochs here going uh, going like uh, from epoch one to to two thousand and we can see like the loss here and the accuracy and it will also like specify the, the validation loss here and the validation accuracy and we can see like the validation loss here or like the loss here and the accuracy is actually like the loss is decreasing uh, fairly nice here epoch per epoch and the accuracy here is also increasing so it, it's fairly good here already after 18 epochs and now we can see that uh, the loss rate the loss here is not really decreasing that much so we can see that it just stopped the training process here because we can we could see like the epochs or like the loss didn't decrease that much and the accuracy um didn't like improve that much so it just automatically stopped and we can now see that the trial one here um, has completed and then we can see the best value here so far is is a zero point uh like uh, zero point oh four and we can also see like the total lap time to so, like how, how long it took to actually like find the best parameters for this neural network here and then it just like runs through uh this stuff here again so our neural network is now done training and we can see here at the end here at the last epoch so epoch eight out of eight we can see that we get a loss of zero point uh, 03 and we get an accuracy of almost like 99 percent accuracy so this is a fairly good model and it only took like uh, two minutes here the total lap time it only took two minutes to train on these 60,000 images here on a gpu here in google colab so this is a pretty good nice model and it already like found the best layers and the best parameters and stuff like that and like the different kind of parameters they can specify uh, when you're creating neural networks and then it found the best weights for each of the different kind of uh, trainable parameters that we have in the neural network so when it's done training here, we can actually like go down here and call this clf.export model. So we're actually like exporting the model here from auto carriers to just like an, an ordinary model here. And then we can, from carriers, we know that we can call this summary here on the model. So we can actually like see the different kind of layers that it found, found to be the best. And also the number of parameters that we have in a neural network that it has trained on and the best parameters that it had learned while doing this auto carriage training process here with machine learning. So if I run this block of code here, we can see we get actually like a summary of the model here. So we can see like the different kind of layers that it chose to be the best and also the number of parameters. And we can see like how the shape of our images here gets downscaled and, and, and like change, uh, change dimensions while going down here because we have some match pooling layers and stuff like that. But we can see that first of all here we have an input layer here where we have our image here 28 by 28. We have no parameters. First of all, it can it casts to float 32, so it uses uh, float to uh, 32 values um, instead of the ordinary ones that we pass it uh, as default. And then it expands the last dimension, so we can see here it's instead of 28 by 28, we will now have a 28 by 28 uh, by one here because we have one channel here because we're operating with uh, grayscale images. And then when we have expanded the last dimension here, we will actually like normalize. Uh, the input so we can then use the normalized input to our convolutional layers which is just like a uh, good good practice to do when we're normalizing our data because then we're working with uh, values between uh, zero, um, 0 and 1 and minus, minus 1 and 1 where we pass it through our, our activation functions which is better when we're training neural networks and then it specifies two convolutional two dimensional layers here or just have these layers here and we have uh, 32 uh, coronals or filters in the first layer and 64 in the second layer and then we can also see the number of parameters that we have for these two convolutional layers 
And then after the two convolution layer here, it's it's followed up by a max pooling layer, which we talked about in previous videos as well. So if you don't know like what's going on in convolutional layers or like in the max pooling layers, I also made videos about that uh, previous in this tutorial here. So make sure to go check that out. And then at the end here, after max pooling, when we have actually like if, uh, extracted our features, we're going to use the dropout layer here. And then when we have dropped out some of the different kind of features or like uh, some of the pixels here, we're actually like going to flatten our images. So we'll just get one, uh, like one array with all the pixel values and then we're going to use dropout again and at the end for actually like doing our classification problem we have this dense layer here so we have a fully connected layer with 10 neurons and the reason we have 10 neurons here is because we have uh, di these handwritten digits from zero to one so we have 10 possible uh, output values here that is can that it can predict and then we can see down here that we have the total parameters here of 110,000 uh, parameters and we can see that we also have uh, the, uh, and kind of the same number of trainable parameters here expect uh, except of three parameters here which is non-trainable uh, doing this neural network training here so if we go down here and actually like want to plot what is going on here um, in the images to just to show like the images and also like how good our neural network here performs by just using auto carries. So the only thing we did was just passing our data to the auto carries function and it did everything for us. We got the model, we could extract the model, we could do a summary, but we can see like what is going on layer by layer. We can see the number of parameters, how complex is our neural network. And then we can just go make predictions with that neural network that it created by using machine learning. So if we go down here and import matplotlib here and we just have this function here to actually like plot uh, the images that we have in our in our test set. So if we go down here and, and plot the first 10, uh, 10 test samples here, we can see we have a 7, 2, 1, uh, 0, 4, 1, 4, 9, 5, uh, 9 here, uh, 5, 9 here in, in the end. And then we'll go down here and actually like do predictions. So when we want to do predictions with our model here, we have the CLF model here, which is the best model that AutoCare has found. And then we call this predict function here as we all as we all always do in Keras. And then we want to do predictions on like the first uh, uh, six samples here. But let's just make it 10 here so we can see like the actual like corresponding to the to the images that we just plotted up here. So if I run this function here, it will now make predictions and we can see that these are the predictions for these images up here uh, for the neural network that we created with auto carries here. So we can see that it predicts the first image here to be a seven, the second image to be a two and one, oh, four, one, four, nine, five, nine. So all of these values here is predicted correctly and it actually like predicted the, the exact uh, the exact like images or like handwritten digits that we plotted up here because we have a really good accuracy and really low loss with this neural network that we created with auto carries. Uh, which was done automatically uh, uh, with machine learning. And then at the end here, if we just go down here and evaluate our model here that we have created on the whole test set uh, with both the images here and the labels, then if we run this function here, uh, we can see that it now evaluates our model that we have created. And we can see that we get a loss of point, uh, 0.04, like around 0.04 and an accuracy here of, of almost like 99% accuracy here. So it's a pr pretty good model when we evaluate it on our whole test set that our neural network hasn't trained on before. So this is a really exact and really precise uh, neural network to actually like predict these handwritten digits here from the MNIST uh, data set. So AutoCarries here is a really nice framework that is built on top of, of carries that we can use uh, or like we can use machine learning to actually like find the best model and the best layers. And also if we want to do transfer learning, then it also uses transfer learning loads some, one of, some of the, like the, pre, uh, the already like pre-trained models into it. And then it does fine tuning and transfer learning on the data set that you pass to it. And then you can just use that model to actually like do predictions after it had trained by using machine learning. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and bell notification here under the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. Uh, I'm currently just doing a computer vision tutorial in C++ with OpenCV so if you're interested in that and also like want to know like how computer vision works and then later on we're going to combine it with this deep learning tutorial here so we can find like computer vision and deep learning and see how they work together. So if you're interested in that computer vision tutorial I'll link to it up here or else I'll just see you next video guys. Bye for now.